Hey guys, welcome to Shooting Gear Reviews. I'm Ben, the Outdoors Air Gunner. Today, we've got a pretty cool thing planned for you guys. We're doing brake barrel versus PCP. What are you gonna get? You're a new air gunner? Man, do you wanna go brake barrel? Do you wanna go PCP? I don't know. Let's check it out. Stay tuned and we're gonna find out. Good morning, air gunners. It's Ben, the Outdoors Air Gunner, out here on a beautiful fall morning here in North Central Arizona to bring you guys another versus video. So today, I wanted to mix it up a little bit. I've been getting asked by a lot of people, what's better, brake barrel or PCP? If I'm just getting into air gunning, should I you know, jump on the PCP boat right away and grab something like a gauntlet and a hand pump? Or is my money better spent with a good quality brake barrel? And so that's what we've got today, guys. We've got one of the finest brake barrels I've ever used. This is the SIG ASP20 and 22 cal right here. And then of course we've got the classic gauntlet 22 cal right here. Guys, this is obviously it's been modded just a little bit. This is my son's gauntlet. So he wanted to do a little paint job on it. And he also has done a couple of the Hajimoto mods to the internals, nothing that we've ordered or purchased just stuff that he was able to do himself with some fine grit sandpaper and i think he did do a little mod there maybe to the uh to the regulator just up the regulator pressure just a smidge so this isn't a complete stock gauntlet but i still think it's a fair comparison because everything that's been done to this gauntlet is stuff that you guys could do for free so uh you know it didn't increase the cost at all so there we have it a gauntlet and a hand pump versus a sig asp 20 two what i would consider great air gun starter packages but is one better than the other i don't know guys you're gonna have to stay tuned and we're gonna find out together all right guys so let's start things off with the brake barrel right here let's talk about it real quick we've got the sig asp20 this is the 22 cal and as i mentioned earlier guys the sig brake barrel really is one of the finest that i have ever had the chance to work with it's overall quality is amazing of course this is the wood stock version which i kind of prefer to the synthetic stock i feel like this is just a little bit better quality guys this is a really nice wood stock uh the gray color is pretty classy i like the you know sort of modern shape to it it's comfortable it's not exactly a pistol grip but because the angle here is is more down rather than back it is very comfortable to shoulder and all in all it's just a great very well made very comfortable brake barrel what makes this particular brake barrel so special, you guys, is this right here, where they came up with this wedge lock system, where the side of the, of the barrel joint basically has a wedge that fits together. You can see one angle there, and then in here there's an angle that matches up to that. So when you lock this barrel up, it's gonna come up straight and true every single time. That was very innovative of SIG to come up with that. This isn't the only version of something that is, a, is an attempt at doing this, as, you know, as far as getting the barrel to come up into true alignment every time. But I just like the way that SIG in particularly has done this. You guys, this is all metal around here. The, uh, you know, obviously all of this is metal. Everything inside of here is metal. Everything about this component right here is machined excellently and is super high quality stuff, you guys. It will last for a long time, in other words. That's what makes this SIG ASP20 so awesome. And on top of its other features, guys, this is a sort of medium high power brake barrel. We're gonna shoot it over the chronograph in just a minute here, but you'll see that it's not the most powerful brake barrel that you can buy. But I think it has what I would call adequate and manageable power. And by that, I mean some of the other high, high power brake barrels have such a harsh recoil that it's hard to get super good accuracy with it. The other thing is that this is a very consistent power plant. You'll see when I shoot it over the chronograph here in just a minute that this is putting out extreme spreads of like five and six feet per second, you guys. So that is awesome. Now let's talk about the gauntlet real quick here. So if you guys have been around air gunning at all, you know what the gauntlet is. If you are brand new to air gunning, you probably also have heard of the gauntlet just because it's so widely talked about these days. And that's for good reason, guys. The gauntlet really sort of broke the mold on what could be offered as far as in an entry level PCP. This thing is regulated. It has a bottle, so we've got a high shot count. It's got a very good quality barrel and moderator, so it's quiet and accurate. Accurate, you guys it's magazine fed so we've got multiple shot we just cock it 
and next shot's in there. It does have a single shot tray that you can put in there, but you know, guys, I pretty much always run this with the, with the magazine in there. So we've got, and also guys, adjustable trigger. I've got the trigger on this one adjusted to where it breaks really, really nicely, you guys. So for an entry level PCP, you guys, the gauntlet has pretty much been king in, in that category for a while. This right now, depending on where you get it, is going to be somewhere in between $250 and $300. You add a hand pump to that, you're at another $150, $100, $150, depending on what hand pump you get. Maybe a little bit more if you're going to get the hill pump, something like that. But guys, for right around $150, good hand pump. I'm going to say that's average. So if we've got this for just shy of $300 and we've got a hand pump for $150, we're right at around $400, $450 for this setup. The SIG ASP20 right now, you guys, is right around $430. So we're really right in that same ballpark as far as cost goes. A huge advantage to PCP if you're new to air gunning, of course, is the no recoil factor. The brake barrels, no matter what they do, guys, they're all gonna have a recoil. Some are worse than others. The SIG, I don't find it to be too bad, but you still, you have to have a, a, a special hold. I like to use the artillery hold with this gun, and basically that just kind of takes the skill to another sort of another level. Not like I'm saying I'm some kind of amazing skilled air gunner. I'm just saying the skill to shoot a brake barrel versus a PCP is totally different. You guys, this with almost no recoil, you just hold it on the target. And as long as you're holding the gun steady and you're not going to pull it to the right or left or up or down as you pull through that trigger, if you hold it straight and true, it's going to shoot straight and true and the recoil isn't gonna send you off a target. You can literally watch through the scope, the pellet track through the air and impact the target. That's one of the things about PCPs, guys, that is really so addictive. It's just the pleasure of shooting is off the charts with these things. Not that I don't like shooting brake barrels, guys, time to time, God, I, just, I love shooting everything, but that's kind of the difference. There you go. I'm sorry if that was boring to you guys. If you're, you know, old school air gunners and you know all of that stuff already. If you are, then maybe you're watching the wrong video because this video is for guys that are trying to decide PCP or brake barrel. And that's where it's at right now. So, so right now I do have these both kitted with Hawk scopes. This one is actually only a three to 12 power scope, or I'm sorry, this is four to 12 power scope. This is the Hawk Air Max on here. And on here, I've got the Hawk first focal plane. This is the six to 24 power scope. So to keep things fair, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this one at 12 power and this one at 12 power. So we're really at the same magnification on the scope. Both of them are Hawk glass. So you know we've got a nice clear picture in there. And I don't think either one's gonna have a huge advantage as far as on the optic side of things. And that'll leave it down to just the accuracy of the gun itself. I'm gonna shoot these at 30 yards and then we're going to take it back to 50 yards. I think that at 30 yards, I'm very confident that this thing is going to group just as well as the gauntlet's able to group. When I push it back to 50 yards, guys, we're going to have to see. I've been able to get some really good 50 and 65 yard groups with this guy, but will they hold up to something like that this gauntlet's able to put out PCP accuracy? We're just going to have to Stay tuned and find out. All right, guys, let's fire some shots over the crony. So I got to tell you that I must have left the mags for this in the case or something somewhere else. Anyways, the point is that, sorry, guys, I don't have the mag today. Really, I'm sorry to myself because I'll edit out all my fussing with trying to single load the pellets. Here we are. I'm going to have to figure out how to basically go like that for each shot. Shot number one over the chronograph. 949. I think that first shot came out a little hot because the gun was actually hot. It had been sitting here in the sun. So I think that pressure in the regulator had gotten upped a little bit from that heat. So I'm going to do six with this just because. Yeah, those last five were like super consistent. We had. Uh, Literally, guys, 923, 937, 930, 921, 923. So that is not too bad, really, of a spread here we're getting with this guy. I mean, that's 
that's decent that is decent all right so now let's do some brake barrel shooting for a little velocity test here today guys i am using these rws hobbies because they are very lightweight pellet and they give me a good baseline as far as what the sort of maximum velocity with a lead pellet is going to be out of any given rifle i like to use them for my velocity stuff so here we go six hour asp 20 22 cal first shot 875 870 we'll do like one more shot here guys just to show you the amazing consistency here 870 all right guys so we had 875 875 872 879 870 870 nine foot per second spread <laughs> that's that's like I, I, that's better than what the gauntlet's doing. Let's just put it that way. Now, the gauntlet had a little bit more power. We had, like, you know, the one was a little high, but other than that, it was all in, like, the 920s range. So, 920 to 930. So, the gauntlet's got a few more foot-pounds. Now, you know, what do you guys want? Do you want something where you have to seek air and keep this thing pumped up and topped off? Or do you guys like the idea of trading off a few foot-pounds for something that all it takes is a single stroke put a pellet in and you're ready to go gosh man there's advantages to either one so let's get the accuracy we're going to do 30 yard accuracy here first and let's just see uh, you know is there a winner in the in the close range accuracy i don't know guys i'm kind of thinking probably not but let's get her done all right guys so we've got our target out there 30 yards is what we're doing first and I'm just gonna go with the old brake barrel first. We'll do something like that. All right, here we go. And for this, guys, I'm gonna use these 1813 JSBs. Both rifles seem to shoot those very well. So that's what we're using here in the accuracy JSBs, all right? Here we go. All right, guys, been a little bit since I shot this. I thought I was going to have to hold a little under at this distance, but it looks like it's actually hitting right at the X. So that first shot, that was kind of a cider. The rest of these, I'm going to actually put the X just right there at the crosshair. So we'll see if we can get a, get a decent group going that way and see if we can get it to be a little bit closer there to the, uh, to the red. There we have it. All right. So we'll do five shots with each. Oh, kind of pulled that one. And I could feel, I, I hit the bullseye on that one, but I actually I pulled it just a little to the left of the group. I could feel I pulled it just so ever so slightly. So darn it. But you know, guys, that's still a decent 30 yard group. Uh, take away the, especially the one that I pulled up. And I mean, we've got like an awesome 30 yard group going on there. So I'm pleased with that. We're gonna do five shots here with the gauntlet. Kind of pulled that one. All 
All right, you guys, that is it. Check that accuracy out. Man, the gauntlet, one hole in it at 50 yards, and that was not even hard to do, you guys. And then, gosh, with the SIG ASP20, I'm impressed with that. You know, if you take away those couple of shots that I know that I pulled, I think that it was grouping just about as well as the gauntlet, guys. So there's really no winner in the accuracy. Really, all that we've learned from that accuracy demonstration is just how important it is with even a high-quality brake barrel to really have your hold down just right, guys, because I know on every single shot that didn't fall right into that group, I could feel that I had pulled it. I didn't follow through just right on that on the recoil, and I wasn't managing that artillery hold just perfectly. I was still able to get the shots close to on target, but you know what, guys? That shows me, man, I just need to practice my brake barrel shooting a little bit more. I've been shooting too much PCP. need to get behind the trigger on those brake barrels a little more and get that artillery hold dialed in just right, because that is really all that contributed to the difference in the accuracy there. So there you have it, you guys. That's the SIG ASP-20 versus the Gauntlet 22 caliber. Brake barrel versus PCP. Man, there's really no clear winner. The main difference is going to be just all come down to this. Do you want to have to hunt air and either get a, a high pressure fill system or just be stuck pumping this thing with a hand pump forever? It takes about 150 pumps to top it back off once you've shot those, uh, you know, 70 shots or so out of it. So that's what you're looking at there, but no learning curve as far as the accuracy. Or do you want to grab something like this SIG ASP-20? not have to ever hunt air, have everything that you need right here. And that's kind of cool, you guys. Man, if it was my choice today between these two, it'd be a tough choice. But I have to say, I would probably go with the ASP-20 if I was a brand new air gunner. Just because, you guys, I like the idea of simplicity. I like the idea that all I need is right here. It's high quality. It's reliable. I can count on it. And as long as I've got pellets, I can shoot. I don't have to have any other apparatus or nothing. All I need is the gun, and that's cool. But you guys might feel something different. You know what? I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. I hope that if you're new to air gunning and you're looking at PCP or brake barrel, that this has given you at least some good food for thought, some things to consider, and uh, just valuable information for you new air gunners. Guys, if you liked this stuff, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what kind of videos would be helpful for you guys to see in the future, and subscribe to the channel. I guess that's about it for today, man. I am Ben, the Outdoors Air Gunner Outdoors, having a whole lot of fun with my air guns. I hope you guys are too, and I will see you in the next video.